Well, there are concerns tonight about an impending weapons deal between North Korea and Russia following a rare meeting between the two leaders. Joining me now is Strategic Analysis Australia Director Michael Shoebridge. Michael, what do we know about this meeting between Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin? Well, Sherry, we know it took Kim a very long time to get there. It would have been two and a half hours by plane, but it took him about four days in his very slow armoured train full of lobsters. But the meeting's happen happening at Russia's primary space launch facility, the place that launched that failed moon mission. And Putin wants artillery shells and rockets for his war in Ukraine. He hasn't got enough of them. And Kim wants space technology. So having it at the space facility is ideal for these two needy leaders. Look, these are two of the most notorious dictators in the world. Uh, we know that Xi Jinping has also been having meetings and conversations with Vladimir Putin as well. Is this more of a formal alliance that we're seeing here shaping between North Korea, Russia and China? Well, I think it's noticeable that Xi is not there and he's also not at Putin's reason for being in that part of his country, which is his Eastern Economic Forum. Putin used to get leaders like Prime Minister Abe of Japan and President uh, Moon Jae-un from uh, South Korea. This year he's reduced to Kim Jong-un and Myanmar generals. So China's not all in on this North Korea-Russia partnership. But really, this is an axis of neediness between mm. Putin and Kim. Look, we spoke last week about how the Chinese President Xi Jinping has missed a couple of global summits now. Uh, he's met to meet with Prime Minister Anthony Albanese sometime later this year. Do you still have concerns about what's going on with Xi and whether there are power plays unfolding or do you think it is likely that the Chinese president, you know, has cemented his position? I think she doesn't want to travel to big international fora like the G20. He had an uncomfortable time at the BRICS meeting with Brazil, Russia, uh, India and China. He it doesn't want to talk about the problems in China, the Chinese economy, and he's also seeming to have problems with his top leaders around him. The rumours he's just sacked his... Defence Minister General Lee, who's only been in the job for about six months. We, of course, saw the Foreign Minister went missing as well. No one has heard from him. He was replaced. No reasons given. We know that that uh, Foreign Minister was having a relationship, at least that's what was reported, an extramarital affair with a woman who was part of the Shanghai faction, the rival faction to Xi Jinping. So it does seem like there's a lot of political rumblings going on in China. It's not well reported in the mainstream media, so it's hard to work out exactly exactly what's happening here, but it does raise the concern that Xi Jinping might do something, um, might bring forward a reunification or an invasion of Taiwan to try and cement his political standing. You know, what do you think about this? Well, I think we're seeing that Xi is not in a strong position at the moment. Uh, internationally, he's being asked questions that are uncomfortable for him. Uh, he's got economic trouble, he's had natural disasters, major floods around Beijing, and he seems to be blaming deputies, which is the classic way that authoritarian leaders handle domestic trouble. There is a possibility he, he unifies the country around him by nationalism and aggression, and we're seeing record numbers of uh, Chinese military incursions around Taiwan right now. So there is a pattern there, but I think... She is a more careful leader than that. And what do you think about the timeline for Taiwan? I mean, it's been reported that uh, Xi Jinping initially was aiming for 2027. Do you think it's likely that he will try and bring that forward? I think he will do it when he thinks he can win and when he has no doubts about his Chinese military's ability. I think the dominance of Western military technology in Ukraine has dented his confidence in advice from his generals. And if he's really just sacked his defence minister, General Lee, that tells us all is not well in the PLA. So I think that all looks like it will delay and complicate Xi's decision. But if he sees weakness from America, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan or other partners, he will take advantage of that. 
Look, I also want to get your thoughts on the arrest of a suspected Chinese spy found working in the UK Parliament, the British Parliament, as a staff member to a politician. It sparked concerns about whether this could happen here in Australia. I had Shadow uh, Home Affairs Minister James Patterson on the show on Monday. Here's what he had to say. Exactly the same thing could happen here because we have exactly the same vulnerability, which is that the vast majority of staff who work for parliamentarians do not receive security vetting or undergo security clearances before they work in this building. Michael, what do you think? Is this a wake-up call to Australia and do you agree with James Patterson there? I, I absolutely do. We've, we're seeing this scandal in the UK now and it hasn't ended. It's probably widening. And we're seeing a massive foreign interference scandal in Canada. And remember, back in 2016, 2018, we had to pass new laws because of the same problem here. This problem isn't over and it needs to, to be taken more seriously by parliamentarians. All right, Michael Shoebridge, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate your insights.